This is part four in our final uh, piece of the teaching that we've been doing on did you know that God loves prosperity? He really does. And if you haven't uh, watched any of the other clips, I really want you to go and watch those after you watch this. But I want you to know and believe that the God you serve is a God of more than enough. Jesus didn't say, I came that you might have life and have it in its restraint and in its lack and, and uh, you know, in its grueling effects and in its, you know, doesn't that sound terrible? He said, no, I've come that you might have life and having it in abundance or fullness or prosperity. That's what he has for you. And Jesus, through the covenant of God's goodness, has given you everything. Do you know that the Bible says that we have been blessed and have available to us all of our needs met according to his riches and glory. All of our needs are met according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. The word glory means splendor and copiousness and bigness. And, you know, it's, it's, it's like the glamour and the abundance, the extravagance of God. That's what the glory is. It's like the riches, the richness, the wealth of heaven. And he has given that to us in Christ Jesus. But even though these things have been given, even in Deuteronomy 8.18, which is a, a promise that God has given us for this year, he says he's giving us the power to make wealth or to create wealth more than enough. It can come to us and all the wisdom that goes with it, but it has to be received by faith. It says all the blessings in the word, all the promises of God are yes and amen to us. It says in Ephesians 1, verse 3, that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. It teaches us in 2 Peter chapter 1, it says that, that every promise is ours, that we can live by the exceeding great precious promises of the Lord. That the, the righteous, the, the uh, 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 God-fearing person lives by these promises and escapes the world and its corruption that is full of lust by living, by the promises. But just thinking about the promises and just coming into agreement with the promises is not enough. If you want to live in Bible prosperity with more than enough, you have to be a man or woman of faith. In Hebrews 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. And so it is the substance of what you're hoping for. So if you're hoping for prosperity, in other words, more than enough, abundance, you've got enough to extravagantly worship God with, and to serve him with, you've got enough to meet your own needs, enough, enough overflowing to meet the needs of others. That's true Bible prosperity, that you're growing and you're being fruitful and multiplying. You know, that's what God blessed us with. If you're loving that, if you want that, if you see that that portion is yours, if that is your hope, it says when you connect by faith that you come into the substance of what you're hoping for. Faith becomes the substance that comes into your life. Oh good, I've got the substance of prosperity in my life. All the things that I'm hoping for are now mine because I now have the substance of what I'm hoping for. That's what faith is. When we receive it and take hold of it and have it, and live in it. It's ours. You can have that. Any promise that God has given you in the word, when you take hold of it, when you read, all my needs shall be met according to his riches and glory, and you take that and it becomes substance to you because it's become faith to you and not just desire anymore, then that will manifest in your life. Not only in the unseen, but it will manifest. It says it's, it's the substance of things hoped for, but it is the evidence of what you cannot see when you have that faith. And when you get a hold of it by faith in that unseen realm, and you have the evidence, that knowing, it's the best way to describe it, that when you're in faith, you know that you know that you know. You know that you know that you know. You know, how do I know that God is real? Because I know that I know that I know. My faith tells me that he is real. When you believe a promise that he gives you, for example, all of your needs are met according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. When you come to a place, I know that I know that I know. My God meets all my needs, all my needs. None of my needs are going to be left unmet because my God meets all my needs. He's a miracle working God. When you know that you know that you know that you know, I know that my God will provide for me no matter what. 
The whole earth could be in drought, but my God will provide for me. Why? Because I believe the promises and I live by the promises of God. My faith tells me that I have the substance of what is a reality in this word. I have the substance of this promise. I have the evidence of what I cannot see. And when I get a hold of that, it will manifest. Didn't it to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob? When they were in the tight squeezes, didn't God come through in the midst of famine and drought for them? Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what we're doing, where we're living, what era we're in, what the economic uh, status is around us. We will do well when we believe the promise of God by faith. If we are going to lay hold of the essence and the substance and the promise of prosperity, the blessing of heaven, the blessing of God over our life, that we live in that in a perpetual way from one degree of glory to another, going